Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday of the fourth week of Easter. Thank you so very much for joining me in this series. Uh, we, we have so much to talk about, and I'm glad that we're talking about in these little snapshots or vignettes so that I could just talk to you about it. You could write some notes about what we're discussing. And if you have any questions, you can, of course, email Susan, and uh, she will then shoot them to me, and I'll answer them accordingly. So, But it's so nice to be with you, to talk about our faith, and to see how beautiful and how much we cherish this faith that we receive from Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who brings us eternal salvation. And how does he do that? Through his body, through his body, the church. Christ and the church are one and the same. Don't ever forget that. They're one and the same. The church is also our mother. A beautiful image of a mother protects her children from danger and harm. And sometimes a mother has to say things that kids don't like. <laughs> like us, right? Sometimes the mother will say things and say, Oh, that's not fair. Oh, you don't love me. Oh, you wouldn't say that if you really cared about me. I hear people say this all the time about our mother, the church. So we have to be careful, you know, what we say, because we talk about these things because sometimes we are selfish and we just want it our way. And we don't understand the greater good. And the church, as a mother, has to be always out for our greater good. See, when Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? He said that to the first pope. Well, feed my sheep. With what? Nonsense and junk? Would a mother feed her kids with, like, bad information? I don't know. No. No. A mother would take care of her kids and feed their her children with good stuff. You know, could you imagine a mother saying, you're going to have chocolate every single day instead of vegetables? And then all of a sudden, their teeth are rotting out. It's the same thing with, with what Jesus said to Peter. Feed my sheep with right information, with the gospel with the sacraments. Take care of them. I'm entrusting you, Peter, with this responsibility. Come on, step up to the plate. You know, you're going to have people say, nah, I don't want, I don't want, I'm going to run away. And that's where we have the fracture. See, you know, they run away. I'm not going to do it anymore. Cal, John Calvin runs away. And Martin Luther runs away. Children from the one flock run away. Listen to your mother, the mother of the church. And I think you can understand that whole imagery of like how a mom takes care of her children, so does Mother Church take care of her children. Peter has a great responsibility. And when I say Peter, you know, you know I mean the Pope and the bishops who are in union with him. You know that, right? So every time I say throughout the word Peter, you know I mean Pope, bishops, in communion with the Holy Father. Absolutely. To give us the good information we need, to give us the teaching we need. What's the magisterium? The teaching office of the church. How Peter, whatever you declare, bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. You're teaching. You're teaching about end-of-life issues. You're teaching about euthanasia. You're teaching about suicide. You're teaching about addiction. You're teaching about all of these areas of life. Abortion. The church must make statements on behalf of Jesus Christ. So what is the living tradition of the church? Capital T. 
Nah. I like to wear this outfit because I wear this outfit on Tuesday. Or I, I, I like to do this on a Wednesday. No, not that. That's small T. No, capital T. The apostolic tradition. The living and breathing, moved by the spirit tradition from the apostles. How divine revelation was given to them. And the apostles took that. and gave it to us, fed us. Feed my sheep, Peter, tend my lambs. A great responsibility. So I think it's all of, it's good for all of us to understand that imagery of the church as mother as well, and a great responsibility for us to be cared for, to be loved, and know that we should be corrected if we are going off the beaten path and brought back. We need to be reconciled back to God, being reconciled back to the church, being reconciled back, of course, to one another, because when you think of the church and you think of reconciliation, Christ did this for all of humanity, that he died for the salvation of all. Now, hopefully, many will respond to that gift. Many would respond to that gift. Why are people, after receiving this beautiful gift of salvation in baptism, reconciliation, holy communion, confirmation, why do they scatter? Why do they leave? Why are they not part of the fold? What voice are they hearing? The church, they say, is not necessary for salvation, but oh, very much so it is, because Christ founded the church. Remember, upon the confession of St. Peter's faith. So as we, as we enter into this mystery, and this gift. It's always a mystery and a gift, isn't it? We have to understand it clearer. You know why we have to understand it? Because you have to articulate it to somebody. So you should practice now. <laughs> you should practice. Practice. Go to your room and pretend you have a conversation with someone who's who's giving you all these questions, how would you answer them? How would you answer them? I was talking to a friend of mine. He said his mother uh, was uh, encountering a Jehovah Witness and they, they told her that, you know, you should belong with Jehovah Witnesses and you need to be born again. And, uh, his mother said, oh, no, no, I'm Catholic. I you know I have a very good priest friend, Father Bellopedi, and um, no, I am, I'm Catholic. And I said to her son, I said, next time you see your mother, you tell her this. The answer to give them when they ask you, you know, you need to be born again, you say to them, you're right, I do. And I was. I was already born again in Jesus Christ through the waters of baptism. And I lived that belief every day of my life. Drop the mic, end of discussion. So what do you, like, you know, just, you know, don't say, oh no, I'm Catholic. 
does that mean? Too much of a witness. You need to be, oh no, I'm Catholic. I, I, I know, you're right. I need to be born again, and I was. And I live that new life in Christ every day of my life. In fact, during the Easter season, I even renew my baptismal promises in which I was born again to renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show and to believe in God, the Father Almighty. I am born again. The church is necessary for salvation. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you.